Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today, following your requests, we're going to investigate how to calculate the significance of individual GASH model parameters across a wide range of different GASH model specifications, as well as how to estimate the significance of overall models, analogous to individual coefficient t stats and f tests for total models and their r squared for usual uh, multiple regression frameworks. And it is quite tricky to expand this logic to your GASH model frameworks simply because you have got no independent variables in the clear sense of the term so that you cannot build the covariance matrix and uh, you cannot estimate the standard errors of the parameters directly. However, for GASH models, something very useful comes from log likelihoods of the models and likelihood ratio test comes to the rescue, simply because we can use the notion that the difference of log likelihood between two different model specifications, and uh, if you multiply it by two, is distributed according to a chi-squared function with k degrees of freedom, where k is the number of additional parameters included into the model. So this particular uh, testing framework is very, very useful in estimating the significance of GASH model parameters, such as alpha, beta, theta in t -gash, and even the delta parameter that corresponds to the power of uh, volatility persistence in the asymmetric power ARSH model, or APARSH for short. And we have got individual videos investigating each of those four models in detail on our channel, so please check those out first if you're interested in particular GASH specifications. Here, we're dealing with estimating the significance of those model parameters and total models overall. And our favorite guinea pig, as usual in estimating GASH models and pretty much everything, is the S&P 500 benchmark. We have got five years worth of data for S&P 500, and we can just start estimating daily returns by dividing prices today by prices yesterday and subtracting one and calculating the whole array of returns for the whole sample and we'll have 1258 returns in total corresponding to five years worth of data and uh, to start with the baseline constant variance assumption we can just calculate the average of our returns and uh, code it as our baseline mu parameter which is the expected return and our variance could be just calculated using the sample variance var.s function imposed onto the area of returns and we can copy those as values and paste them into the constant uh, variance specification and in the baseline case uh, assume that the alpha parameter is equal to zero no immediate persistence beta parameter is equal to zero no conditional volatility or variance persistence theta is equal to zero and delta is equal to two because we are dealing with persistence of variance in the uh, cases up until we deal with APOSH. And now we can just drag those across and have our baseline assumptions always be in the constant, uh, constant volatility assumption, and then we'll tweak the respective parameters in each of those specifications to maximize, hopefully, and improve upon the log likelihood of previous models. So now we can uh, calculate long-run volatilities in each of the five specifications, and those can be generally calculated using the following approach. You can uh, divide your omega parameter, which is the unconditional uh, variance parameter. You can divide it by 1 minus uh, alpha minus beta, and raise it to the power of 1 over delta, where delta is just the power. So in the baseline case, it will be a square root to the power of a half, and in a posh, it could be any positive power whatsoever. So we can drag this across and calculate wrong long volatilities for all five specifications. And then we can start calculating the residuals and uh, conditional 
uh, volatilities and corresponding log likelihoods for all five models. So the residual for uh, all five models would be just the uh, corresponding returns. And here we lock the column because the data does not uh, change um, as per every single model. And we subtract the respective mu parameter. And here we lock the row and not the column because if we drag it across, we will be able to select different mu parameters for different specifications. So we can then drag this across and calculate our residuals for all five models in question throughout the sample. And then we can start calculating our conditional volatilities. Uh, as usual, for the first observation where we have no lagged residual whatsoever and no lagged conditional volatility, we assume those to be equal to long run volatilities. So that's the first row sorted. And then we can start applying uh, these particular formulas. And what is handy here is that each simpler model is actually a particular case of a more general model where some of the parameters are fixed, and most commonly they are fixed to zeros. For example, ash is just gash with beta equal to zero, isn't it? And t gash is just a pash with delta equal to two. So knowing that, we can simply use the a pash formula, the most general of the formulas we investigate, and uh, calculate that by uh, keeping in mind that some of the parameters would be fixed. So here, for our conditional volatility one day uh, in the future, our uh, conditional volatility would be equal to, open the brackets, first start with our uh, unconditional variance omega with uh, row locked, then we can add our immediate persistence parameter alpha and multiply it by the following bracket. First of all, we need to input the absolute uh, lagged residual, which is uh, this. So please uh, keep in mind that we need to refer to model specific estimates. And then we can add theta, which is the asymmetry parameter that corresponds to uh, asymmetric responses to positive and negative uh, shocks, positive and negative disturbances, times the residual uh, without the absolute function applied to it, as per this formula. And then this whole bracket needs to be raised to the power of delta over here. And again, delta would be equal to 2 for all models except aparge, but for generality we'll just preserve that logic. And then finally, we account for the persistence of conditional volatility itself, and uh, uh, add beta, which is this parameter over here, times lagged conditional volatility, which is one cell above, to the power of delta. And then, given the fact that this uh, corresponds to conditional variance for all models except aparge and conditional variance raised to the power delta, and conditional volatility raised to the power delta for aparge itself, we can raise it to the power of one over delta to get back the conditional volatility. That's something we care about. And then we can drag this across and bottom right click it all the way down to get our conditional volatility for all five models for all of our observation periods. And we can see that given the constant volatility assumptions, it's unsurprising that our conditional volatility remains the same across all models and across all days. But that would change as we vary the parameters. Finally, we need to calculate the log likelihood. And uh, this can be uh, enforced using the uh, probability density function of the standard normal distribution over here with uh, uh, parameters uh, epsilon t squared, which is the uh, realized variance, and vt squared and vt, which are conditional variance and conditional volatility respectively. And here, uh, as a simple trick to uh, simplify the convergence of the algorithm, we use the if error function. So when the uh, log likelihood function is not specified, we'll just return a very negative number so that the algorithm knows that it should not pick values where the algorithm doesn't uh, return a correct uh, response. And here we can just start with the natural logarithm uh, of our uh, probability density function. So we return one divided by, and in the denominator, we return square root of two times pi and multiply that by the respective conditional volatility over here. And then the denominator is specified and we can just multiply it by the respective exponent. And in the exponent, we have got the numerator, which is the realized uh, variance, which is our 
residual squared. And in the denominator of our uh, exponent function argument, we have got two times the conditional volatility squared. And that constitutes the argument of our uh, log function, as we are uh, concerned with log likelihood. Again, here, uh, our likelihood would be the product of all probability density functions, but we use the logarithm to convert this product into the sum. So our solver is, again, converging uh, much faster and uh, with greater ease and is more precise. And here, uh, value if error, we can specify to be equal to minus a thousand, for example, just some very large negative number. And here we can just drag it across and enforce uh, the log likelihood function for all of our models. And log likelihood for a particular model will be just the sum of log likelihoods for a particular model across all observation days. And we can drag it across and get uh, 4,218.94 for all five models as they are all corresponding right now to the constant uh, volatility assumption. And here, to maximize our total log likelihood across all five specifications, we can calculate the sum of log likelihood across five models. And now we can go data solver and specify our optimization task. So it's quite intuitive that we need to maximize the sum of log likelihood across all five models. And we can do that seamlessly because those five log likelihoods are independent as every single model dwells on its own specific parameters that can be changed independently. And now we need to carefully uh, specify which parameters do we want changed in each of the five models. So for the constant volatility assumption, we can only change mu and omega. For Arsh model, we also want to change alpha, the immediate persistence parameter. For Gash, we want to change alpha and beta, and only those. In T Gash, we also have theta. And finally, for the A Pash, we change all six parameters, including delta, which is the power that corresponds to the nature of volatility persistence. And now we can untick the make unconstrained variables non-negative requirement simply because our theta, for example, can be negative and our mu theoretically can be negative, but most importantly, because we have got our caveat over, over here in the log likelihood calculations that makes uh, it impossible for solver to crash on uh, uh, nonsensical parameter values. And we can stick with GRG nonlinear, the gradient descent method, and click solve and wait until the algorithm converges to optimal values. And then we can compare our log likelihood values and extract our significance, our p-values for individual parameters, as well as for whole models. And the algorithm has just converged in optimal parameter values. And we can see here that log likelihood is increasing from model to model as we include more and more parameters and we can vary more parameters to optimize it. However, how significant is this improvement in log likelihood? Turns out that the notion of a significant, a substantial increase or improvement in log likelihood is something that we can easily implement into a significance test for individual parameters using the so-called likelihood ratio test. And again, the logic of it is that you compare two times the uh, difference between uh, different log likelihoods from different model specifications to a chi-squared distribution, to a critical value of a chi-squared distribution, and the degrees of freedom here is equal to the number of additional parameters. So quite easily, it follows that for the significance of alpha parameter, we can compare, or at least uh, calculate the difference, two times of the log likelihood of the Arsh model minus the log likelihood of the constant volatility model. And we see that the chi-squared statistic for this particular uh, parameter is 157, uh, approximately, and we can drag that across to look at incremental improvements in log likelihood when we add one more uh, parameter into our uh, Gash model. And uh, the degrees of freedom here are always equal to one because we sequentially add one more parameter from uh, constant volatility to Arsh, we just add alpha, from Arsh to Gash, we just add beta, from Gash to T Gash, we just add theta, and from T gosh to A posh, we just add delta, or at least assume that delta can be something else rather than two. And here we can see that 
indeed the value of delta that maximizes log likelihood is approximately 1.3, meaning that our volatility persistence process is a little bit more heavy-tailed than uh, implied in the variance persistence with delta equals 2. However, our main concern now is to calculate the p-values, and those can be retrieved from a chi-squared right-tailed distribution, so chi-squared dist right-tailed, and we can simply input our chi-squared stat and the degrees of freedom, that is, the number of additional parameters. And we can see that all four of our parameters are extremely significant. They all four return a p-value of less than 1%, meaning that each additional parameter does add a lot of value, a lot of explanatory power to our Gauss model to study or to explain the dynamics of volatility persistence in S&P 500 returns with more and more precision and more informational value. And now we can also apply um, the likelihood ratio test to study the significance of whole models. Here we have got tests that are equivalent to individual coefficient t-tests in multiple regression frameworks. However, how to test for the significance of the overall model? And here it's also quite easy. The significance of the ARSH model is how much do we add in terms of log likelihood compared to the constant volatility assumption. So here we can just lock uh, cell B20 and calculate uh, this particular chi-squared statistic and drag it across to see how much uh, does a particular model improve upon the baseline case. And the degrees of freedom here would be the number of additional parameters we have got in comparison to said baseline case. So it's one additional parameter for Arsh, alpha, two additional parameters for Gosh, alpha, and beta, three for T Gosh, alpha, beta, and theta, and four for A posh, alpha, beta, theta, and delta. And now the p-value here can be calculated by just copying this formula and pasting it over here. And we can see that uh, as well, all four of those models are incredibly statistically significant as all return very low p-values, meaning that the probability of such an improvement being random is very close to zero. And that's all there is in terms of using the likelihood ratio test to measure statistical significance of individual GASH model parameters or overall GASH models. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make it to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like, and send support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.